You're listening to Your Purpose and Business Podcast, where we connect you to possibilities. I'm your host, Raquel Walters, a two-time best-selling author, millennial speaker, corporate trainer, advocate, and clinical social worker at heart. Your Purpose and Business Podcast will connect you with everyday successful people who will share their impactful stories, insights, challenges, failures, and triumphs on how they're navigating the working world, whether by climbing the 95 corporate ladder or starting, growing, and scaling their business. So grab your pen and notebook because you'll want to implement the nuggets and tools, strategies, is shared in every episode. Class is in session. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Your Purpose and Business podcast. I am here with Mr. Michael Pellegrino. So Michael has spent most of his life in the entertainment industry. Notable relationships include Kat Cora, Nicole Elridge, Mike Marino, The Four Tops, Ronnie McNair, Larry Braggs, Ice-T, Coco, Jermaine Jackson, Marlon Jackson, Hulk Hogan, and many others. Michael is a best-selling author and is changing the game and refining the literary world. He is the founder of The Author's World, where is a, he is building a platform to be shared on a global basis to bring readers and authors together by creating a global community. The overall concept of the authorsworld.com is to give people a voice on a global platform. Michael has recently been featured in Hustle and Soul magazine, Biz Boost News, Heart of Hollywood magazine, On Mogul, Brains magazine, and more. Mr. Michael Pellegrino, welcome to the Your Purpose and Business podcast. It's a pleasure to have you. Oh, it's, a, it's all my pleasure. And thank you so much for having me. And I'm glad that you're feeling better. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Pellegrino. So I ask all of my guests this question, and it's a big one. What do you think is your purpose in this world? Wow. Um, that's a loaded question. Uh, if I have to kind of pinpoint it down to a specific thing, I think... I feel that one of my biggest purposes is to help people, to educate them on first and foremost that it's okay to make mistakes in life and you can pretty much accomplish anything in the world that you want to, but you have to go after it and I think that one of the goals that I've always have felt that's important to me to try to pass on to others is don't ever give up, believe in what your vision is. Um, I mean, that's one of the really important things. The other thing is I am a gigantic believer, obviously, since I've been spending 10 years building this platform on changing the landscape of everything that is happening in the literary world. And at the given moment, it's a perfect time for what we're trying to accomplish at the author's world, because not just because of the pandemic, but technology has changed the landscape of how we get books, how we interact with authors, writers. And I, I wanna be, I wanna leave a legacy that I was part of something that helped change the direction of, of the new era of how we, how we go about communicating and getting books. Um, we lost a lot of social contact in the new way that we communicate with, with getting books in today's society. The pandemic was even 10 times worse, you know, because we were locked down. And I think people found a lot of comfort in binge watching TV. And at the same time, they rediscovered reading. They rediscovered the love of books. Um, they had time. But 
we have fallen into that crazy, crazy world where, I mean, you know, our phones are next to us, our tablets, everything is digital. And we lost the social presence of communication that, that wanting to shake somebody's hand to sit and have a conversation with somebody, not through a screen, but physical contact uh, is really important in many ways, uh, mentally, you know, physically. I want to be the guy that is known to help redefine that, that uh, possibility of communicating with readers and authors even though it's still going to be through some digital platform, but there's going to be a, a, a more community, a more one-on-one -on -one basis with authors and readers. So to surmise it, I want to be, I want to be the guy that people look up and say, wow, he was a game changer, you know, like, you know, Amazon changed the world and how we do things and buy things. And they started off selling books. Right. That was their sole thing. You know, Facebook, uh, you know, became this gigantic social platform. You know, Mark Zuckerberg had the foresight to change the game there. But now I think the literary world is lacking. And I want to fill that void. And I want to do it not just for adults, though, you know, it's there's multiple divisions. I want to be part of the creation, the creation of helping mold children at a young age, mm -hmm. steer them towards reading. And by doing that, that gives the opportunity, you know, if you have children, it gives you time at nighttime to read to your child, to bond, to have some kind of more intimate relationship with them instead of just taking the tablet or the phone and putting it in front of them and saying, all right, you got 15 minutes or 30 minutes and then shutting it off, good night. Mm -hmm. We need communication in the world. So, you know, it's a long answer I gave you, I know, but I want to change the world of, of literary, how we communicate with each other. And I want publishers to have an outlet, a new format, so they can sell books. It's very important. But I want, you know, we don't go to book signings no more. It's gone. Right. And people don't get to see their favorite authors like they used to. They don't get to get their books signed the way they used to. And it, wouldn't it be wonderful just to sit here, you know, and have five, 10 minutes to, to get a chance to engage with one of your favorite authors and to find yeah. out stuff? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to do and what I'm trying to create. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of what I want to be known for. Yes, uh, amazing. That's what I could do. Yes, no, that is amazing. Because um, as you were speaking, I was thinking, Michael, um, if you could remember, because I could tell you're a lover of books. And yes, yes you are absolutely right. I mean, long gone are the days where you see anyone barely going into a library these days, um, you know, picking out their favorite book, whether it's for school purposes or for, you know, leisure, just for fun to read. Um, to be honest with you, I don't even know. Um, and I'm a millennial, if, if people are even doing uh, book clubs anymore, you know, because um, it's a they're way not. to bond. They're not. Right. They're not what they were. And that is, I think that's a gigantic void mm -hmm. that we're missing in, in so many different directions mm -hmm. that, that what you just said, we're missing the, the book clubs are missing the interaction with you and I discussing something that we may or may not agree or disagree on, but it opens up the line of communication to discuss something, but also 
we lost the connection of being, you know, connected with the author. Um, they're, they write books, they get put out on the internet now, and that's pretty much it. There, you, there's no more Q and A's. Mm -hmm. And I think that was one of the most exciting things about book clubs when, when people sat around and discussed the book, everybody had an opinion yeah. And sometimes there you know, little debates would come out and it's all positive though, because it, it gave us the opportunity to, to light a fire under people to start conversation mm -hmm. and to socialize. Right. And we don't socialize no more. That's the problem. Right. Socializing is Zooming, you know, it's conference calling. Mm -hmm. I get it. It's the new world, and it it it, it helps save money. Uh, it's a quicker way, but the human factor is being taken away from us. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that people really do have to understand. It doesn't make a difference without human interaction. You're you're alone, right? You know? And I could talk to you all day long the way we're doing it, but we're not really having humor interaction. Right. You know, I go to the bookstore and they used to pick a book out. And I, you know, I tell people, I go, you sat down and you read the book at your Borders or Barnes and Noble. And then you went and you got yourself a cup of coffee. And before you know it, you met a friend mm -hmm. and you were discussing your, your favorite books and what are you reading? What, you know, hey, try this book. Mm -hmm. It's, I call it the human factor. We lost it. We lost that, that personal touch. Right. And book clubs, like you said, are almost non-existent. And I'm going to do everything in my human power to bring back a global book club where people from all over the world and children you know children yeah. have their own uh section where they can literally sit there and integrate with each other about books all across the world mm -hmm. and get them get to socialize with new friends from places that they would never have a chance to get to know yes i think it's vital it's important to to reestablish what 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 once it was there we lost it and yeah. we need it back regain that's, it right and that's what i'm trying to do yeah and 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 i am you know applauding you on this mission because it's a big one but i also believe that it's doable once you know you are doing it um once we can get more people to get on board because you know um, michael i remember like i said i'm a millennial i was born in 1987 and i remember my mom used to take me to the library on saturdays and you know i would grab a book but long old long gone are those days where you know um even i'm not a, a parent yet but even for my nephews you know they're not really doing that it's everything is technology the ipads youtube you know um and you know my sister um she makes every attempt but for whatever reason they're just uh, stuck to the ipad you know and I'm, I'm sure there are many people across the world um that's dealing with this issue so it's it's sort of like even when you're talking about children i'm like it, it has to start you know again from the children and then you know incorporating the parents and building up from there to have like children books club and adults book club and um hopefully we can get back you know what we've been missing all these years that communication you know you hit it right on the head and that's exactly the literally when we were trying to configure how the children's division was going to work mm -hmm. and I have some absolutely amazing people that they have children yes. they they understand but they all agree that you know they put the iPad or the phone in front and they YouTube now or they're watching something in they don't spend the quality time that they used to when like when you were a child right. that you should. And I think for the development of a child, 
especially for bonding with their parents, especially in today's society with all the horrible things that happen. I think that it's important that at a very young age, we start to establish a bond and a relationship with parents and child. And the way of doing that, I, I feel is that quality time, whether it be during the daytime or the evening time of sitting, spend a half hour and read to your child and engage, communicate. Right. Because maybe something will come across while you're reading the book, they wanna ask you a question or a problem or something happened on the playground today, whatever, it will help initiate trust, a bond, they'll start building a stronger foundation with the parents and the children. So right. there's a lot of different factors. Yes, absolutely. And tell us, Michael, some more, um, because I know you've been um, in the entertainment industry, um, you know, renowned and esteemed and, um, you know, creating and being the founder of the author's world. Um, where is the connection there personally um, for you? I know that you're a lover of books and I know you've explained, you know, your bigger purpose of why you want to bring back that global community. Um, Tell us, how are you um, utilizing the author's world? Are, can people publish their books on there, market their books? Um, like the community that you are building, um, like walk us through so that we can help support, you know, to, to bring the author's world to the larger masses um, as well. It's, it's a great question. And it's, I'm gonna take this sip because I have a lot. Sure. <laughs> yes, and I wanna hear. <laughs> so, the author's world has the author's world for adults has um, multiple divisions. The first one is you'll be able to, like a Facebook, you'll be able to put up your profile and you'll be able to, to say, hi, you know, I'm Michael. I love uh, horror. And I, this is one of my favorite authors and you'll list the books that you actually love. And it's important, the common denominator of what we're building is to be part of our, our global community is the love of books. That's the common denominator. And you put your profile up and then you meet somebody and uh, you know all of a sudden uh, Pam logs on is like, oh my God, I love that book too. Hey, have you tried and read Robin Cook? Because I love medical mysteries. Okay. And then there starts to be an interaction of becoming friends with that person. Then they start to literally put down like their library of the books that they love and they make suggestions and they can go on to their friends. Their friends could request hey, Michael, would it be okay if, and literally you'll be able from the website, you'll be able to borrow from your, your friend's library, that book. Oh, wow. Which is really like a cool, a cool app that we have yes. that's gonna be done. At the same time, that's, that's for reader to reader. Mm -hmm authors are, if you're a first time author or a want to be author, there will be an entire division where you'll be able to put your work on the platform. There'll be a whole section on the website for you to put your work up there and for people to, to view it or give them uh, a nice synopsis about what it is. And if you want, they'll be able to be put up there for sale and they can sell their book through the site. There'll be a, an entire shopping cart for all of that. And then for those that are very well established authors, that will be another whole division where they'll have a platform to promote their books of what's coming out. Mm -hmm. um, publishers, I think, are going to love us. I, I, I feel that they're going to, you know, sing our praise because there's no more bookstores. Right. And, uh, th they are 
the founders of of what has happened technology wise which is amazon mm -hmm. but amazon you know i'm a gigantic uh admirer of what what jeff basil created i think he it was brilliant yeah but they own the world basically yes this is not the priority mm -hmm. and and our little pun books is the priority yeah i don't want to own you know walgreens and i don't want to uh, sell everything in the world i want to sell books mm -hmm. and, and i want to build a community mm -hmm. for people to to interact and i that's what's missing you know amazon started there and they were very successful at it but they steered away from it and they never had a full-blown book club mm -hmm. where people could actually interact nobody's ever built a platform where somebody it's very difficult to get a publishing uh, uh deal yes. with the traditional publishing house um and you know that's like one in the lottery basically right it's very difficult we are going to give people that opportunity you can put your work up there you know long, long as it passes the guidelines of you know being you know nothing that's you know harmful or anything like that your book will be able to be put up there and people will be able to critique you mm -hmm. and we you know we're we built filters where we don't want people to be destroyed and discouraged by negativity mm -hmm. but we want honesty right i don't want for people to to go on and say oh my god it's the best book in the entire world buy it buy it buy it buy it there i want people to literally express their true opinions but in the kind way and to be truthful and say you know it wasn't the best read in the world uh, i felt this i felt that that's your opinion mm -hmm. and you're entitled to that and maybe it's true, maybe it's not, but the author will get the opportunity who wrote it to look at it, maybe better themselves, mm -hmm. or maybe be like, you know what? I feel great with what I created and I'm happy with it. Mm -hmm. But I want the opportunity for everybody that wants to be a writer, an author, a composer to get out there and to be able to get technically to have their work put out there for everybody to read and for the opportunity to purchase it and just to to get feedback it's right hard. no i mean yeah. it, it really is a hard hard right now getting feedback i mean obviously a lot of people when they either they self-publish they go on amazon you know barnes and nobles etc but obviously amazon is the number one um but i've never seen for now yes i've never for now yes yes because that's that's going to lead me to my next um comment and praise for the author's world because this is going to be a game changer mr pellegrino because it is it is and i i don't want to use this term but it's sort of like a one-stop shop for authors and want to be authors and readers alike um, that will be able to engage in this online community. And of course, I'm pretty sure that you also will be able to um, take, you know, meetings, um, you know, offline as well. Once, you know, those communities are split into different, you know, uh, local. right, right. And so I think this is brilliant. Um, I'm excited for it. I want to learn more because um, the storytelling, um, to me, in some ways, has it, it's watered down a little bit because in the world of social media, and I don't really mean to go off on a tangent, but but in the world of social media, it's it's all about okay, look at me, what I have, especially for millennials on on social media, Instagram. I think that the core of whether it's um you know fiction or nonfiction. Um, we need to get back to that, you know, um, talk about, okay, if this is, okay, a self-help book, or this is a true life story, or if this is a, a horror story, um, let us talk about it and, and, you know, engage off of that and share our ideas and it's entertaining, it's fun, 
you know, it's edutain, ed, ed, educating, you know, or um, edutaining, as they would say, education plus the entertainment, right? It's both, uh, you need both. Both. And I think that the author's world will be able um, to, um, you know, accommodate every person um, when it comes on to, you know, wanting to, to read books or learn more or become an author or be able to, to market um, and also being able to um, be picked up by a publisher as well. So kudos and, to you. Yeah. And that's a, that, that's really a, a, a great comment because people, they they get lost uh like there's an old uh, italian saying they get lost in the sauce yes. and people they don't get the opportunity to be seen mm -hmm. and um there's been so many young artists that have been discovered through youtube mm -hmm. justin bieber was discovered right. through youtube uh, I, I believe through through Usher, if I'm not mistaken, yes. at, at one point. And the author's world is like that. It's it's given the the unknown people the opportunity to be heard. They everybody deserves a voice. And that's what yes. we're really aiming for is that global community to give everybody a voice. Yes. You know to be able to choose and pick. I mean, we're too much self-involved, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, like you said, with social media. And it, it, it's an oxymoron because without <laughs> it, you know, you wouldn't have some of the things that we have nowadays. Very true, very true. You know? So yes, it, it, it is a good thing, but it's also, it, it's robbed us from some of the things that really are the core foundation of, of who we are. Yes. yes. And, and I, I, I'm trying to integrate all of that in, into one thing, which is not easy, but I think that we've done that. And like you were saying, people love to be able to communicate with the people that write books and and it gives the authors a chance to connect with the readers mm -hmm. you know it, it builds your 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 core audience up right I, I would love to know you know speak with stephen king and be like what gave you the inspiration to create this character right you know and hear what he has to say back mm -hmm. we need that we need that q a again yeah. of of finding out stuff and hopefully with with just a little luck and a lot a lot of hard work and many mistakes <laughs> we have yes. about to accomplish that yes and um is it fair for me to say that this is also a part of your life's work as well because yes. you, you <laughs> when you talk about the author's world and i know you have done many many things um but yes yes uh, this was something that uh, in 2005, I created the vision of it, mm -hmm. of what I wanted, and it's evolved mm -hmm. um, over time with the help of a lot of people, you know, uh, just spitballing and trying to figure out, well, what about this? What about that? And with the great creations of some really cool apps that are out there now. And, you know, uh, you know, Facebook was a gigantic thing, yes. but no, nobody was out there creating anything about books. We forgot about them. Right. And at the end of the day, it's it, books are not going away. It's, it's just not. how we get them. Right. And, you know, one of the most exciting things that I feel that we've created with the children's division is, uh, so you're, you have no children yet, but. Uh, I have nephews and a niece. Yeah. You, well, okay. So, you know, if you're with them and the doorbell rings and our, our uh, soon to be competitor knocks on the door and rings the bell and drops off a box, the kids are excited. They want to open up the box. Right. 
And we've created an entire division where it's not just online. Children every month, just like adults, are going to have the option of physically getting books delivered to them through a book club with all kinds of wonderful, great animated characters that come with it. Right. That, and, and we tried to integrate entertainment, as you and I were just talking about, with the learning process. I want children to be able to open a book and be entertained by the wonderful characters that are in the book and the storylines, if it's something we created, and if not, whoever created it. But I also want them to be able to learn. Right. And that's what's really important. True. So we've taken a lot of time to figure out how do we integrate all of these elements into this. And, you know, my gosh, every month, you know, children will be excited mm -hmm. when the doorbell rings, there's a package for little Jimmy or, or you know, Tina or whoever. You well, know. Yes. They have a package, oh my God, it's to me, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an excitement, we wanna, and, and children get stimulated by that and it will give them more enthusiasm to want to open that up and read what was just delivered to them. Nice. And I, that's kind of an exciting aspect. It is, it is exciting times because you spoke about the Authors World uh, platform you, uh, where you could create the profile and, you know, uh, communicate with other authors or, you know, readers. And um, you spoke about um, the app that's coming up. I've also read about a podcast as well. You have a podcast, the Authors World podcast. Please speak to that. Yes, uh, and that's probably the first thing that will be launched uh, in, in less than six weeks Great. where, and it's, it's not your typical podcast. Uh -huh. we, we've built out a unbelievable studio. We, we do make feature films and commercials and mm -hmm. we, we, have, we produce music and stuff for artists, but when we were doing this, podcasting became gigantic during the pandemic. Yes. And I started to really follow it. And I said, well, this is really cool, but let's change the game. Let, let's make it not just like a podcast. Let's, let's make it like a late night show where, you know, we get all these cool guests that have books coming out mm -hmm. or, or have written. And we get them on and we, we do a really laid back, chilled atmosphere. And we ask the questions and, you know, viewers could literally log on and like, wow, I wanna ask Ice this question, you know, what, what made them do? And you know, the producer will be like, hey, we got a question from Minneapolis, you know, and literally they'll be like, Ice, what do you think of this? But it's going to be the set's very laid back. It's it's like a late night show. Right. It's how we're producing it. Right. Um, instead of like a very strict format. Strict format, we, right. We like wanna, a laid back vibe. Right. We want to be laid back, sit on the couch, uh, and let's talk about the new book you got coming out, you know? Right. And, and how's the family? What's happening? You know, we want the readers, the viewers to feel like, oh my God, I can't wait till that show comes on tonight. Guess who's going to be appearing this week and be excited about it. Yes. You know, so I think we, we've taken things up a notch mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Creative, creative wise, or at least I hope so. <laughs> yes, it, it is exciting. I mean, I, I want to uh, shift gear a little bit, Michael. Like, what what keeps you fighting um, to make Authors World the number one, you know, platform for book lovers? You know, because you know, life is about failure, and I know you've been tested, but I also know that um, this is going to be victorious as well because it's much needed especially right now in the world, in the marketplace. So what, if you could encourage the listeners who 
aspiring to become an author or want to eventually place their book on the author's world or want to be a part of this or with anything that they're doing in life, right? What keeps you going and what advice would you give? Wow. Uh, well, first of all, what inspires me, because um, there's been so many times developing this that I have just felt defeated, uh, down and uh, is it worth it? My gosh, we have to recode this, redo this. And then I will get a phone call from a client or a friend or somebody that happened to see an article or heard something and, oh my gosh, this is the most exciting thing that you're doing. You are going to change the landscape. And I'm like, do you think so? Am I really going to make a difference? Yes, this is, this is brilliant. And it's like a vitamin B12 shot. They, they, they give me that stimulation again to go out there and to keep fighting because it's, it's not only a labor of love, it's something that I truly, truly believe in. But I've been, I've had to figure out, well, you know, it's not cheap to put something like this together. Yeah. And we at this, up to this very point, we have been self-funded. We have not gone out and raised capital. We've, we've had good years, we've had bad years. And, you know, we throw our money into it and our tech team that's coding has stood behind us, you know, uh, in, in, in 2019, it was brutal. It was a really rough year. We spent the fortune doing stuff and I was going to have to close shop down for a while and take a, take a break till I figured out how to recapitalize to keep going. And what motivated me to keep going was the people that were working for me. They had families to feed. They had children, car payments, house payments. Everybody sat down and says, you can't stop you have to keep going this is going to be a game changer you are a game changer we'll stick with you and that year everybody i paid them through stock options oh wow that's impressive yeah, yeah. i mean literally they they took options in the company and waived whatever pay they were going to get for that year. That's how much they believe in the author's world. Yes. And that, that's what mm -hmm. motivated me. And, and, and I was just captivated by what they were willing to sacrifice. I was like, wow, how could I not keep going? If they believe, how could I not believe? Yes. And I think it's really, it's so important. It's vital for people that are watching right now or are gonna watch later to understand something. One of the worst things that people do to other people is, uh, I call them haters. Mm -hmm. when people are trying, people start to succeed uh, or people are trying to do something. You always have the naysayers the people that are like, oh, that'll never work. I don't know why you're wasting your time. They, some people, they let them get into their head and they beat them up. Mm -hmm. And people give up and they, they don't realize their dreams that they could have had because they listen to negativity. Yes. And don't listen to negativity. If you believe and what you're doing, and you feel you have something, go for it. Mm -hmm. The worst thing that could happen is you fail. Right. And you know what happens when you fail? You learn the lesson. Learn. Yes, absolutely. And the next time you won't make the same mistake, mm -hmm. but get back up. 
and keep fighting. I've been doing this for 10 years, building this, yeah. and people have no clue, none of what I have. I, and I've had so many sicknesses in the meantime, I, I had a lot of health challenges. Oh. So I, I was trying to juggle my, my, my business of creating, working with my, my talent, mm -hmm. trying to create content for other things that we do. And at the same time, I'm trying to build this gigantic uh, author's world. Yeah. And I kept going though. Mm -hmm. and there were days that were rainy days, I say, you know, they were cloudy, I wasn't sure. But deep down, there was a few people that kept just rooting for me mm -hmm. and they motivated me. It's like a Rocky movie, you know? You, yeah. You get back up and you're like, all right, come on. I got one more, one more left in me, you know? Yes. I, I want people to fight. For it. You, if you want to, look, it, it's simple. If you want to be known to be the person that changed the game, you got to get in the game. You have to get in. You got to get in there. So you don't have to be the biggest, but you could be the best and keep going forward and, and you will succeed. Don't listen to the negativity, block it out. And it's, it's easy to say, people are gonna always say that, but I'm telling you, I've been there. I've been beat down. I've been, people have just discouraged me. And at some point in time, I realized I don't need those people in my life. Mm -hmm they're 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 a nuisance to me i need the people that are sitting there rooting for me that that believe and trust me i've got some very smart people working with me yes they're not dumb they believe mm -hmm. and for them to sit there you know i've got some mit guys that you know are on my team and they're like wow this is cool you know like we're so happy to be part of it that makes me proud yeah. to, to be like, wow, these, these guys actually believe that. They believe in me. I'm not going to let them down. Right. right. Keep fighting. Right. You're out there. Don't give up on your dreams because they, they'll happen if you, you just have to keep fighting for it. Mm -hmm. be, yeah. be in control of your destiny. I love that. Be in control of your destiny. And we know that the author's world is going to definitely um, give a voice um, to everyone on our global platform. And any last words, Mr. Pellegrino, um, about the author's world? How can uh, persons connect um, with you and the author's world and with your team? Um, please feel free to share. Well, you know, right now, uh, you, you could literally go to the author's world uh, dot com and, and, and register, you know, uh, give, give, give us your info. And then when we're ready to launch, we'll be able to send out mass emails to everybody that the site went up live and what's happening. Um, ever, the same thing with the authors world podcast.com that will be coming, you know, right now, I think we're six weeks away, maybe. Um, we're, we're starting to, uh, we got postponed. We were supposed to actually launch, uh, probably about nine months ago mm -hmm. and, um, between the pandemic starting to spike again, and I fell into some really horrible health issues. We postponed it, but we kept building the site and we kept adding more and more cool things and the children's division started to get even more bigger and more designs. So it was, it was a negative thing in one hand. And on the other hand, it was a positive. Yes. So people can go, you know, literally sign up now. You could go to Facebook. They could, you know, the, the authors world, uh, dot com. They could go on there and sign up, uh, it was when we first, not long ago, launched our our Facebook page. I think we got like a hundred thousand subscribers in just days. 
and that's when I was like, wow. Yes, there's a need out there. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be big. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't know what the future holds. We're hoping to take it all the way and, you know, maybe go public. We don't know what brings the future brings. We do know we have something really special and we can't wait to share it with the world. Uh, it's not a domestic thing. It, this is a global thing. Yes. And that's really important. We want to share with the, with the world. And we want, you know, there's a lot of people out there that don't have access mm -hmm. to the opportunity for books and stuff. And we're literally, in, as we speak, we're in the middle of setting up several foundations that will help mm -hmm. Uh, literacy all across the world with children and adults getting books and also helping people that have not had that opportunity in life to fulfill to get their diploma their GED We're, we literally are going to and put in place those those particular aspects of what we're doing to help fund those opportunities for people to to get educated yes to get their basics and for children all over the world to have opportunity to get books you know so wow. hopefully the world will embrace us as much as we want to embrace them and I do believe, Mr. Pellegrino, that the world will be embracing the author's world. It is so exciting. I'm so excited. I'm so honored to have you sitting here and telling us and sharing about the author's world and your vision and what it will accomplish. Because I, I definitely believe, too, that this will be a game changer Thank on a global you. level. And um, also the opportunity to give back to um, and to educate all others, you know, um, that philanthropy work is definitely of utmost importance. And we do know that many of us, including myself, you know, when you pick up the book, a book for the first time, it really opens up your world and your mind, even if you haven't traveled to the places or, you know, or even if it's make believe. And so right. that's the beauty of a book. And you're going to bring back so much uh, love and hope and, you know, uh, vision and um, educating so many. And um, I applaud you and I support you. Thank you so much. That means a lot more than you can imagine. I appreciate that. And I want to thank you for, for having me. It was an honor. Thank you. You're very welcome. And guys, as always, um, the show notes, um, the website will be included in the show notes. Um, every information about the author's world so that you can subscribe and you'll be receiving the newsletter like Mr. Pellegrino said um, once they launch. So please go out and support. And as always, friends, be good to yourself and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye for now. Thank you. God bless. Thank you for listening. If you've loved this episode, let's stay in touch. Head over to RachelWalters.com and subscribe to my email list so that I can send you updates on new episodes, exclusive motivational nuggets, and insider knowledge that's only shared when you join our community. Please don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and leave a review as I want to know your thoughts about every episode. Follow me on Instagram at Your Purpose and Business Podcast. And remember, your life is beautiful. And this is a part of your journey. So embrace it. Speak to you soon.